in an issue that's important to Ohioans, coal and energy policy. Mitt Romney's bus tour visited Ohio's coal country this week with a stop in far eastern Ohio. There he met with coal miners. It was a pretty dramatic visual. Miners wearing hard hats and dirty overalls and some with coal soot still on their faces. Romney used the stop to attack the president's energy record. We have 250 years of coal. Why in the heck wouldn't we use it? And so I want to take advantage of those energy resources. Of course, I like all the sources of energy. You've probably heard the president say he's for all of the above. And I wondered what he meant, because I see how he's been waging war on coal. And I wondered how could he possibly say that? Then it came to me. He's for all the sources of energy that come from above the ground. None of those that come from below the ground, like oil and coal and gas. Obama, believe it or not, did not visit Ohio this week. He was in Iowa defending his energy record and pushing the benefits of wind energy with turbines built by U.S. manufacturers. So I want to stop giving $4 billion in taxpayer subsidies that are going to oil companies that are making huge profits and have been subsidized for 100 years, and let's keep on investing in the new homegrown energy that's creating jobs right here in Iowa. Marianne Sharkey, how important is coal to winning Ohio? The, the, the coal mine industry, the manufacturers who rely on cheap energy produced by coal, how important is it now? Well, coal all, always has been a hot button issue in Ohio. I mean, it, particularly in eastern Ohio, um, there's a lot of jobs that are impacted by it. And of course, we get a lot of our energy and a lot of our, a lot of our you know, first energy and, and everyone else relies a lot on coal. Um, I would say at this point, Obama has got to really articulate a real energy policy. I don't really know what his energy policy is. Um, uh, solar has not really proven itself yet. Windmills, we've been putting, we've been trying to put them up on Lake Erie, and it's not proving itself. So I don't know what the real energy policy of Obama is. Um, and so he's got to come back with with some sort of a policy to offset. But yeah, coal is important to Ohio. It always will be important and, to Ohio. Ohio is coal country. The Appalachian region has been kind of a political bellwether, I'm pretty sure. I think when, when Ronald Reagan won Ohio mm -hmm. in the nation, uh, coal country, the Appalachia went for him right. when Jimmy Carter and Bill Clinton won, and there was, you know, a shift the other way. It's because, partly because they won coal country. I don't think it's that Obama doesn't have an energy policy. I think it's, A, the part of the energy policy that he's pushing is something that's so far-reaching that people just can't see it and grasp it. We hear and talk wind, solar, all of these renewable energy sources, but it's just something that we're not getting our hands on, our arms around. Is it, is it, it that he, he wants to push alternative energy? But he can't annoy the coal folks too much because then you lose Ohio and West Virginia. Well, you know, he can't. I mean, he can't an annoy just for economic reasons. We're seventh nationally. We're seventh ranked in, in use and in, in production, if you will, production of coal. Uh, this is an economic thing we just can't ignore. He, it's not even to say that he doesn't have an economic policy as it's relative to coal. He does. He has invested in this. He's invested in R&D, about $4 billion bucks in this stuff. He here. pushes clean coal. That's absolutely. Absolutely. Saying, absolutely. So it's not that he doesn't have the policy. We've got to have a balanced approach to how we create sustainable energy here in the country. And I think his is the most viable of the candidates. Well, I think too. You, you know, Mitt Romney during that speech also mentioned that he, you know, he thinks that if he's elected, the U.S. will achieve uh, energy independence by 2021. Uh, the, the it's curious because the the way we would do that and the reason that you can make those projections is, and, and actually, Citigroup uh, actually projected it in 2020. Uh, and it's because of natural gas. It has nothing to do with coal. Yeah. Um, coal is being pushed out. I mean, and it really is. It's, it's funny, you, you talk about the, the coal and, and going out and talking to coal miners and winning that area, and that's important because it's jobs. However, when you're talking about a national energy policy, coal is becoming less and less yes. of the energy source we're looking for. Natural gas with fracking and other things, and, and the price, which has way come way, way down in the last few years for natural gas. That is, that is what they're looking at right now when, it, when you're talking about energy independence. And we're seeing, you know, coal-fired po uh, power plants closing down. We saw a study yesterday saying that we're at the lowest level of carbon dioxide right. in our atmosphere in 20 years right. because natural gas is replacing coal. But we still export coal to China. Do we become, you know, we, we've heard it before, the Saudi Arabia of coal, where we're exporting coal to China, let them deal with the pollution and the and the soot. 
Mm. Unfortunately, it makes it to us eventually, I think. Yes, yeah. it's called global warming. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, politically, <laughs> though, uh, what's interesting <laughs> is this week the Obama people had an ad basically saying Obama is more pro-coal than Romney, and environmental groups, usually allied with the Democrats and Obama, said, we're outraged by this. Don't be saying coal yeah. is so great. It's dirty. That's the tricky balance. Now, it is a bigger issue with the, in the Senate campaign. Josh Mandela is really going after Sherrod Brown for you know, his stances. He has voted against cap and trade, knowing that it's important to Northeast Ohio, Mary Ann. It's, this yes. is going to be likely to be a larger issue in that campaign. Yes, it will be. I, I was amused, however, at the appearance by Mitt Romney when he said that uh, that Sherrod Brown was from a different part of the state, yeah. unlike, of course, um, Josh Mandel, who's from Lyndhurst near Cleveland, right. and Sherrod's actually from Mansfield, which is even a little closer to eastern Ohio yeah. than uh, Lyndhurst yeah. is. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's get back to the sort of back and forth. Yes. Uh, the campaign took kind of a nasty turn this week. Uh, started off by Joe Biden. Romney wants to let the, he said in the first hundred days, he's going to let the big banks once again write their own rules. Unchain Wall Street. They're going to put you all back in chains. Another outrageous charge just came a few hours ago in Virginia, and the White House sinks a little bit lower. Mr. President, take your campaign of division and anger and hate back to Chicago and let us get about rebuilding and reuniting America. Michael Cole, what did you think of Joe Biden's comment? I mean, did he, it was obviously inappropriate. It was poorly phrased. Would it have been, did, did the media give him a pass? As opposed to if a Republican had said that, they would have been all over him. Well, of course the media gave them a pass, but I think it was because they understood the context of which it was being stated. This is not about going back to slavery. I mean, if that's the case, none of us are any more slaves economically than we've ever been in the history of this country than today. I mean, the reality is, is that we can't allow ourselves to be confined by conventions, Republican conventions that want to take away programs that keep us sustainable, take away opportunities that otherwise move this country forward. And I, I, I think he got an unfair, uh, somewhat of an unfair deal. Yes, he's known for his gaffes, though. Let's give him that. He is known for his gaffes. <laughs> that was one. And we in the media love him for it. <laughs> what, what, I, what I found amusing there was the, the back to the Chicago and using Chicago as this. And I, and I think it's because they are really starting to chafe under the kind of campaign that they're seeing from Obama. They have not seen Democrats do these kind of campaigns before. And these are a bunch of Chicago what do you mean by guys. This type of campaign. I mean, it's rough campaign? and tumble. I mean, they're giving it a bad as hard as they can get it. I mean, John Kerry got swift voted. Obama is not about to get swift voted here. So, do we see more nastiness? I mean, it's kind of a well. Yeah. Does anybody really question. think either party can hold some kind of high ground here when it comes to complaints <laughs> about nasty campaigns? Yeah. I mean, anyone who's got a TV set can tell you that this campaign has been plenty nasty from both sides. But I, I think Marianne's exactly right. I think, and I, I, I think I saw E.J. Dion write, write this this week as well, basically saying the reason it looks nastier is because Democrats are have wised up and started to punch back harder than they've punched in the past. Swift voting and the Obama um, birth certificate issue; those are the kind. Of, now they're turning around and trying to use those kind of things. Unfortunately, it, it's not good for the uh, public discourse. Does it to complain about the other side's negative ads and to complain about media coverage, does that, Bill, does that, does that blow back in your face sometimes? It can hurt you? You know, it's almost like, like you're whining. Yeah, I, do, I think the voters are so, are so skeptical and cynical about this, although the voters themselves, I think, are in a way hypocritical. I mean, if you like one side, you know, you say, well, my guy's just fighting back, you know, he against this hate or whatever it is. Uh, when the other guy does it, you say, oh, that's terrible. You know, it's so uncivil. Um, so I think uh, I think there's so much partisanship, not only among the politicians, but among their partisan supporters. Folks too. watching the ads. And the reason why they're negative ads is because they work. <laughs>